everybody. Um, look, my questions relate a little bit to the way in which uh, complaints are dealt with um, by students. Mr Robinson, how many complaints does um, your agency receive? Um, I'll just get you the exact number in a moment, but it's about 1,500 a year. Yes. Um, I'll get you the exact numbers uh, when you pull it out. And I, uh, roughly 45% of those complaints come from students, I, I think. 45%? About 45%. And of those, how many lead to investigations? I'll just get that now. So, uh, going back over the... No, that's... Not complaints about RTOs. Um, sorry, Senator. No, that, that's get the okay. Information in a moment. So what the process is? Thank you. Um, so. Uh, well, there's so many figures, isn't it? You know. <laughs> so let me just. <laughs> thank you, Senator. Um, I'll just get the. Uh, the numbers over the years. Where, is that? Where are they? Well, we've had a total of, yeah, for the four and a half years, we've had a total of 5,783 yes. complaints about RTOs. And just under 40% of those came from students. 11% came from other training providers who, um, <coughs> other training providers get concerned if they think someone's shortchanging or providing yes. poor quality partly because they find it difficult to compete with them. Mm. Um, employees, 6%. Industry stakeholders and sort of peak bodies are 6.5%. Um, government licensing authorities, state government occupational regulators, yep. is 4%. And, um, uh, and then uh, there is, there's about 30% where the person didn't identify themselves okay. as a category. Right. But that's been about 1,500 a year. What we do with those complaints is, and we've restructured our organisation really to put more emphasis on complaints and intelligence okay. in the marketplace yes. as the way we prioritise who we look at, and not the, oh, they're coming up for re-registration. Like, we look at them then too, but mm. we really want the focal point of our triggering our work to be around issues that we identify as causing harm to the sector and the complaints that people raise about okay. RTOs. So right. getting multiple complaints from students, and in fact, is, makes them a high priority for us to deal with. So we don't wait till they're yes. due for the next re-registration. We go and look at them straight away. And we are increasing the numbers that we're doing um, in compliance audits and the like All right. so um, uh, compared to what we used to do. Thank you. So the second part of my question was looking at um, the, the number of those complaints that have been received that led to investigations. Do you have a percent or a number on that? Yes, so I've got the, the ones that uh, happened during the year, uh, the last year up to December 2015. Mm. So um, we, we had 527 complaints received over the year plus 21 new ones. Yes. Um, sorry, I've got that wrong. 1,624 complaints about RTOs were received in the last 12 months. And was it 500 that were in investigated? Or do you investigate every complaint that's received? No, some of these were... So the 500 were ones that we'd received earlier that have been closed okay. since. Um, we investigate... Um, I'm just trying to find the percentage that were investigated. Um, so uh, here we are. We investigated. Uh, tw we investigated 22% where the outcome was found to be not be substantiated, or, or they were unable to be substantiated from the evidence we gave them. Right. 17% of them were sub investigated and substantiated. 12. Another 12% 12 were investigated and partially substantiated. 3% were withdrawn by the person making the complaint, and 46% of them were assessed as being of a lesser scale, and we use that to inform our future um, activity okay. with the RTO. Sense. And at times we also write to that RTO and say, this was a complaint 
and remind them of what they're sure. supposed to be uh, okay. doing in that case. And, and Mr Robinson, what criteria do you apply in terms of determining whether a matter should be investigated? Is there a threshold test? Or there, do there you is. There's, there's, a, there's a sort of a, a matrix of factors and we, we do a, what we call a triage, an assessment of each complaint yes. against those criteria. Uh, and then they determine whether or not they should be investigated whether they and then in, in, and what nature of that investigation might it take? In some cases, it's, it's a matter of writing to the RTO and asking for further yes. information. In other cases, it's sending the orders out to have a look. C at. Can you give me a sense of uh, obviously just briefly a sense of some of the criteria that you take into account? Um, it's it's essentially um, are they are the complaints relating to serious uh, non-compliance against the standards, particularly mm. in relation to um, training and assessment quality, yes, and also in relation to were they were the students told something misleading, but we also look at whether there's only one complaint or whether there are more. Okay, you know the, sure. the number of complaints it, and the nature of them. Is one of the criteria that you take into account whether or not the student has lodged a complaint uh, within the institution in which they're enrolled? Well, well they are required to have already exhausted that, exhausted that option before So what the process do you have in place to make sure that that process within that institution is being conducted in a, a well, fair uh, and appropriate uh, way? Because given some of the issues that we've had within the sector, I am a little bit concerned that those organisations may not necessarily have the best complaints mechanisms mm -hmm. in place. Requiring that as a threshold question surely imposes a bit of a barrier on people reaching out to your organisation for assistance. Well, indeed, but they can and they do come back to us if they've exhausted that and not been satisfied, satisfied with, the with the outcome. But how would a student know what their rights are under under those Yeah, um, we, we, we publish quite a lot of information about that for students about the things they can do if they have a complaint and... Um, well, how uh, is know, that information made available to students? We, well, we, we publish it on our website and the like. Um, and we make, um, and, and we require under the standards, RTOs are required to have a policy themselves and make that information available under that policy. So when, we, when we're checking compliance, we look to see whether they've got those mechanisms in place. So, I mean, the website and the like, can you give me a well, bit And more the RTOs there? information they give to students. Yeah, right? okay. But yeah. is there anything that's done in terms of more proactively making students aware of the potential for them to contact your agency? Is there any uh, um, Well, I think, or... I think this is an interesting issue in the vet sector, Senator, because most of the students are adults who are studying part-time in a vocational yeah. course, yes. and they don't have student associations and no. the same sorts of information channels that the university sector, particularly for the younger group That's of right. university yeah. students, have. So you're quite right to say it's, it's, I think it is harder to get that information out. So, but the standards have been enhanced in the last, uh, the ones that came in in April last year, to require RTOs to inform <coughs> students as they enrol that these processes are available, not only their own processes, but well, uh, so they get information about it, but whether they all take it in or, or well, not. What I'm, safeguards do you have in place to make sure that the institutions are actually providing that information to students? Well, indeed, some of the complaints are about the fact that they didn't get in information. But how would a student know that they could make a complaint about not getting appropriate well, they, information they, on your agency if they hadn't been provided with the information? Well, sometimes they discover later something should have happened that didn't happen didn't to them. Occur. They weren't told the right things and they, they do come and complain to us about it. And, and they're, they're the sorts of things we look at in our audits and they can be uncovered at that point as so, well. So do you think there could be a cause to have more uh, resources allocated to a promotion of the, the potential for students to make complaints? Is that something...? Well, because of the, the disparate nature of uh, the way you know, vet students engage with the system, the main process that's there is that the, the RTOs are required to pass this information on to, to students when they enrol them and we do have that information on our website available as well. And we have lots of people use that, that website in any given year. How many people visit um, the website? I'll get that number now, but it's, it's large. And, um, uh, you know, I think, I think... But I do think 
getting a consistent information out to vet students mm. is a difficult task, actually. So does, I might ask you, Minister, does the government have any plans to address that issue? In terms of getting the information to vet students about complaints mechanisms and procedures and so on available to them, well, the government has enacted a number of plans in that regard, Senator, so as Mr Robinson rightly identified, um, additional, uh, additional um, requirements were placed on RTOs to make sure that information is provided to students. Last year we also launched the uh, uh, the complaints hotline, um, which uh, provides then a single and simple um, location for students to complain, noting, complain, noting that uh, some student complaints are relevant for ASQA, sometimes they might be relevant for um, state bodies, um, in particular consumer affairs bodies, sometimes they might be relevant for the department. So having a single complaints centre, the complaints hotline, which has an associated email address and so on as well, acts as a triage service essentially for complaints to make sure that rather than a student have to understand the complexities of who is responsible for what, um, they can lodge their complaint in one place and it is then directed in the, uh, in the sure. right uh, But, um, but pathway. does it not concern you though if one of the um, main avenues for a student to become made aware of the complaints mechanism is actually the institution in which they're enrolled in? Given some of the issues we've, we've had within the sector, is there not a, a problem there in terms of relying on those institutions well, to make people aware okay, of the complaints I, I think um, do you, if, do you if, so, if somebody is to motivated that? to make a complaint, um, and that of course is, you know, is the first test, but if they are motivated to make a complaint, I would think that most nowadays would probably turn to Google to work out where they were going to make that complaint in the first place. And, uh, and I think um, doing that will turn up the avenues that are available to them relatively swiftly. So um, Google, that's the solution, is it? Well, no, no, no. Se se Senator, I'm, you're, you're asking the serious question. I'm saying, I mean, I'm not sure whether you're proposing that the government should run a multi-million dollar advertising campaign highlighting what the complaints procedures are. <laughs> um, uh, no, I think you've um, already blasted your advertising um, spend. I, um, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I think that we have streamlined the complaints processes available to students by having the single portal as such for complaints to, uh, to enter into. We've increased requirements for information to be made available to students uh, and that practically if you put yourself in the shoes of a student who wants to make a complaint, you might choose to ring your state consumer affairs body, that might be where you first think. Otherwise in this day and age you are most likely to go online to look to where to make your complaint. Um, uh, and uh, and the avenues will become fairly quickly available to you if you do that. What, what about um, if you're somebody from a culturally and linguistically diverse background? Do you have any mechanisms in place to uh, make students from those backgrounds aware of the potential to complain? Yeah, we. I, I think we're in the process of enhancing the the. Um, information available from the informa information line, the hotline, uh, for people with, um, you know, other languages. So we'll get back to you on where that's up to. Yeah, if you could take that on notice. Yeah, we will. Good. And I was conscious of people that are in enrolled in a lot of these topics maybe from different backgrounds. Indeed, and, and, that's, and it's true that that's a, a major barrier to people. But the, we had uh, 300 and over 376,000 unique visitors to our website. 376,000, okay. Uh, last year, and 206, two, oh, sorry, 2.6 million page views. I'll get you some information about which of those were the page views about student information, of, which might include complaints and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that'd be good. Yeah. 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 And uh, yes, if you could follow up on the, the issue around people from culturally yeah. and linguistically yeah. diverse backgrounds, okay. that, that would be good. Because obviously, I mean, the mechanisms around Google and so on aren't necessarily going to work in um, for everyone in that circumstance. Yep. Um, all right. Thank you. That, that's all from me. Thanks, Senator.